All right, so we're going to be moving away from proofs of congruent triangles and moving into doing proofs of different things. So here, we're going to be talking about how to prove that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6 when we have parallel lines. Now, previously, you were able to simply say that angle 4 was congruent to angle 6 because they are alternate interior angles. Well, we're not going to be able to do that anymore every time, so sometimes you're going to have to prove it. So what we're going to do is prove this one. So we always start, this one we're going to do a two-column proof. So on one side we have our statements, and on the other side we have our reasons. First thing we always start off with is our given. We know that A is congruent to B, that's what we're given, so our reason is given. All right, now we need to talk about what angles are supplementary, what angles are congruent, and things like that, so that we can start talking about how to prove that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6 based on clear information that we know has to be true. All right, so we're going to start using the information that we know has to be true we can use reasons such as corresponding angles because they have to be congruent and we can use information for vertical angles because we know they have to be congruent. So I'm going to use some of these angles that are listed that are not actually angle 4 or angle 6. So I'm going to start off by saying that I know angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because they are vertical angles. Okay, we all know that. Angles across from each other are congruent. So vertical angles are congruent. Now I also know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. And I know that because they are corresponding angles. So these are all terms that you have seen before. So corresponding angles are congruent. Now, here's where we use a little bit new vocabulary. I gave you some vocabulary in a video. This is the same video that had the reflexive property in it. I'm going to use the substitution property on this one. If I know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, and I also know that angle 6 is congruent to angle 2, doesn't that mean that angle 4 has to be congruent to angle 6? I can simply replace this angle 2 with this angle 4. I can say that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6 by substitution. Now, there was another way that we talked about this. You don't have to use the substitution property. Another property you could use is the transitive property. I suggest that one of the things you need to do is go back to your notes from this video, the video that had the vocabulary in it. Go back to those notes and you need to look back over those, okay, because we're about to start using that vocabulary. Reflexive property, symmetric property, transitive property, and substitution property. So, this is how we prove that alternate interior angles are congruent. So you already know how to use them. We already know how to solve for them if we're given one and have to figure the other. But where we're going now is how to do these proofs. So the questions you're going to have attached with this video are going to mostly be some fill-in-the-blank proofs of how to prove that different pieces of parallel lines and transversals are congruent. So make sure that you go to my website, go to the daily lesson plans page, and access the videos. See you guys on Friday.